Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of our new series on the channel Let's Look At. Today we're playing Sunlight, a game developed by Krillbyte. From what I've seen of it, Sunlight is a beautiful, thoughtful and short little game with hand-painted graphics and a soundtrack that uses a lot of choral music. I've mentioned before that this is a short game, so this video will show the entirety of the game. If you want to experience it for yourself, you can pick it up on Steam for a very, very little price. Now, um, a couple of things I want to highlight even just from the menu. Um, one of the first things that I've noticed was uh, we've got a, a customized little mouse pointer. It looks very beautiful, the shape of this, this sweet little leaf. Uh, just looking at the, um, at the options, the graphics, um, I mean, they, they are not a lot of choices for graphics. Um, and for the rest of the options, I'm putting subtitles on and the text size to medium uh, so that if there's anything we, we miss or if um, people are hearing impaired, then they will be able to also interact with the game. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. Welcome. Are you sitting comfortably? Are you focused and not thinking about whatever's bothering you these days? I'm not here to test you. Please relax. Let your thoughts come and go and listen as they fade away in the distance. For better or for worse, this is where your life has brought you. Looking at a screen, listening to me. Imagine, for a moment, that you've just had a child. It's healthy, but unfortunately also completely blind. For their whole life, they will live in the dark and not see a thing. Their perception of reality is something that you might never be able to comprehend. How would you describe the world to them? What can't be touched or heard, smelled or tasted? How would you describe sunlight? By what it does? Or how it feels on their skin? I think I'd play them this piece of music. First composed by Tchaikovsky in 1878, these rays of light have traveled through decade after decade, finally reaching your ears this very moment. You have also traveled far to get here today, but you're only passing through and should probably get going. While you're here, I'd like to tell you a story. It all happened to me when I was young, walking in a forest much like you. Those were days filled with boundaries and rules of no running in the hallways, don't do this or that or the other. With my world full of fierce discipline, I walked the forest to play. One day, deep in the woods, I found a funny little tree creeping on and With little work, a few bits of bark became huge ships. Calm creeks turned to ferocious oceans. I can still recall the people I imagined dragged downstream with a sense of guilt. As I gazed back upon the old tree, I noticed something peculiar. It was crying. Every crumple, like eyes closed tightly, clear drops streaming silently down its wrinkly skin. So I did, as children do. 
tasted it. Not because it looked tasty, but to figure out what it was. The first drop made my tongue tingle. The second made it prickle. And at the very, very moment, moment, the third landed on my tongue. tongue. A profound sensation spread through my chest. Undefinable, like thirst, both vague and specific. One thing was clear. Something was changing within me. Within me. I remember breathing in. And, and out. Feeding the fire. my skull completely from behind. I could even feel the tiny needles covering my eyeballs. But it did not stop there. I held my breath as the small thorns crawled around my lips before spreading into my lungs and stomach. My awareness spread with it. And, and I, I remember, remember the strangest sensation of my, of my mushy, mushy dinner, dinner in there, as, as if I held its remains in the palm of my, my hand. hand. control and open my mouth an explosion of air rushing into my lungs the tingling spread with it through an endless web of veins soon reaching my beating heart for a moment i stood in awe of the activity within my body i felt my heart beating faster and my skin sweating 
your body is your only destiny in this world. And there is a place. The cost of fame is total. See how I thought. And at that very moment, the tingling knees shot from my brain down through my spine. I felt them scatter through my upper leg, where muscles contracted to lift my knee. My body weight shifted forward, and a shock wave spread from the foot sole as it landed softly on the ground. The process repeated itself in great detail for every step. I was overwhelmed, but my body kept moving. I did I not at all feel, feel like the boss giving directions. It, it all happens automatically. And I simply along for the ride. Like, like you. you. I suppose that is true. I mean, we are given a sense of agency in a video game, in any video game, that, you know, things happen when we press W or um, move forward with the analog or stick on the controller. But here, we're literally just here to experience the game. We do have some kind of agency when we're moving around and we can dictate what happens. But, you know, like the narrative is telling us, we're really just along for the ride. We're really just here to experience something and to have something happen to us rather than us changing the game. And by picking up these flowers, we're moving the narrative along slowly but surely. Following the hands of clock mounted on the doctor's wall. They were both speeding up and slowing down. I was slipping further and further away, a levitating camera in a video game. Merging with the code it was running on, again with the binary with the electronic circuits and so on. I closed my eyes and let my sensations bleed me. First, I spent some time with my bones. Among many, many functions, I got lost in their continuous breathing. An uninterrupted flow of calcium absorbed. 
and released. Even my skeleton is alive and living in and of itself. I could feel my mind clinging to the known, to the clattering thoughts, the, the buzzing of memories and fears for the future. But, but for each breath, tension was released and my shoulders sunk comfortably. It had certainly felt like I was in there, somewhere behind my face. But I was nowhere to be found. And the more I looked, the more hazy I became. I feel calm and more aware, but also at the same time lost. Lost in the game. started daydreaming, or so I thought. It, it began, began as a shimmering field, creeping slowly in from the periphery of my vision. The hands of the clock, still moving, but among them vague shapes. Slowly, but surely, I saw trees flowing past me, and among them, Myself, sitting right there in the dark darkness, with a vacant expression. While walking around myself, I was surprised to still see the clock straight ahead. Myself from the side, the clock on the wall. The two images were not overlapping, they just coexisted. Like imagining a familiar place with your eyes closed. Do you see both nothing and something? And you see both nothing and something at the same time. I, I turned to look, to look towards, look towards myself, but, but saw only the face, face of the doctor. Of the doctor. Lingering somewhere between confusion, concern, and annoyance. However, when However, I studied this face, closer, I, studied this face I was struck by terror. I was struck by terror. The image of myself had turned to look straight into my own eyes. I felt my own hand reach out towards myself. The weight of my hand landing softly on my own shoulder. Eyes distant, looking at the doctor, looking at myself. Rules and boundaries disappearing.
a delicate wave of nostalgia washing over me. Intimate recollections of past sorrow, relationships, education, and even medical experience. And at last, I was no longer alone. Not in the sense that the doctor was there in the room, but rather that we were together in the darkness of my mind. The last number of sensations were still flowing, but now with two observers to share the burden. of sight, a hand picked me up. And as I kept breathing, the fire kept spreading. Soon, it swallowed my parents, sitting in their chairs, doubting my story. I felt contradicting opinions and ideas coexist, but not in conflict. Different notes in harmonious chords, shaping a balanced indivisible whole. More clouds spread into my vision. And more sensations through my body. The music was evolving. I looked at my hand. Five fingers against the surface felt no different than five bodies or minds. Branches becoming aware that they were connected to the same trunk all along. Their experience my own. All of them present in my mind. Sensations flowing. My world. Like musical sunlight. Just passing through. Every individual going about their business. Strangers on the street unaware that they were all each other, their surroundings, and me. I knew and felt them all as I knew and felt myself. And I could no longer feel contempt or that anyone was somehow less deserving. There was no longer me and you, no us versus them. It was all just me. Breathing in and, and out. out. Each new breath pushed me along a ubiquitous landscape that was simply too beautiful to ignore. 
what lay past each tree and beyond every hill was another idea I knew to be true. Mountains, transient shadows of matter flowing through time. Slowly from one point of view, but for the mountain itself, oh boy. It's in a hurry, like everyone else. Both the whirlpool and the stream. An expression of energy floating through empty space. All experiences merging to one. There I was, all of us, you, me, I. The light that shines through the film. All else is smoke and mirrors. Preserving its illusion of separateness. The screen. Our very own us. I couldn't tell if I ascended or dissolved. I'm soaring through space. But I'm able to move nevertheless. And as I turn and move. The boundary between light and dark keeps moving. A cascading wave of thoughts arriving in the dark. Just a simple way of dust. suspended in nothing. An energy field fumbling in the dark, trying to describe myself. I want to be safe, well fed, not too warm, not too cold, to be acknowledged by my closeness. So even though you are another part of me looking back, you will always be a stranger. A lump of resources for my exploitation. The branches cut. My hemisphere separated once again. Rocks skipping along the surface, never sinking in. The inconsistent dash of beauty between the noise. Picked up by a stranger with good intentions. And with it, Sentence to die. I, I don't care who you are or how you found me. me. But we are both reaching in. A few lonely rays venturing through space in just the right, the right direction. Absorbed in our leaves, stored as if you will. And exhale with crystals and, and clean, clean oxygen. oxygen. And, and while, while the light warms our skin, skin or while we, we wait for the, the next, next sunrise, sunrise, we 
This is interesting. Wow. I can't tell you what I'm currently feeling or how exactly I experienced this, but um, this was definitely an experience that I feel that can't be replicated by anything else. Especially with the kind of story that is just telling about sunlight. the game. I really feel like I could walk in that forest forever, you know, j just with the soundtrack and and the trees and the sunlight and the grass and little hedges. Um, even even with without the even even without the voiceovers but without the voiceover I think it it definitely wouldn't have that forward driving momentum like it by itself it's a very beautiful game um, but the voiceover especially with so many voices kind of phasing in and out really help um, bring home the entire experience and the feelings that you get from this sense of togetherness, of people and thoughts and ideas kind of floating through space, you know, together but not really together. Um, something I thought that was very interesting was 
that the landscape didn't really change, obviously, until the very end, but the landscape never changed um, in that we were still walking in a forest and we were picking up flowers to, you know, have the game move forward, but the voiceover was talking about us being in a doctor's office and looking at a clock and looking at ourselves and looking at the doctor and, you know, talking about these experiences that we were feeling, but we were still walking in a forest. We were all kind of listening to all this and experiencing all this, but there was nothing in the landscape or even in the feelings of the controls to give us any kind of indication that we were feeling anything in the voiceover. And it's not a bad thing at all. It completely adds to this very, very unique experience, and I absolutely love it. Um, so to finish off this video, I really, really encourage each and one of you to go to Steam and pick up this game. It is incredibly cheap and it should be more, but it's definitely well worth the experience. You can pick it up, it'll run on probably anything, and you know, you'll just be able to experience this because I, I mean, I, I didn't offer a lot of commentary because I felt that it would break the immersion for you, but also it was incredibly meditative. You know, you you hear in this forest with your thoughts and with this voiceover and with all the, the music and the, the sound of the forest and these beautiful handcrafted landscapes. You really need to just take it all in. So um, yeah, pick up the game. And um, if you got this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll be back with another episode in our series. Let's look at Thank you all for watching.